Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to show you how to use the Coin Market Cap API with Python. Um, so we have a couple options here with this API. We can either grab multiple currencies, we can grab a specific currency, or we can grab the global data, such as the total market cap of all currencies. So I'm going to show you how to do each one of these. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need is Python 3. And if you already have that installed, you can just say pip3 install request. That's the only library we're going to need for this one. So now inside of your Python program, let's just save it, save it as um, coinmarketcap.py. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing we want to do want to do is import requests. We're also going to want to import JSON. The first thing we're going to need are the base URLs. So these are the global URL and the ticker URL. So the global URL is down here. And the ticker URL is up here. And this ticker URL automatically grabs 100 currencies unless you specify which currency you want, such as Bitcoin. All right, so now let's grab data out of this global URL. So I'm going to say request equals request dot get global URL data equals request dot JSON. So we're going to format it as JSON. I'm going to say the global market app equals data. And this right here, so we're grabbing data from the JSON API. So basically whatever we say here, we'll be grabbing from here. So if we say total market cap USD, we'll be grabbing this value. Now let's make a menu for our users to interact with. Let's say, welcome to the coin market cap explorer. Print global. All cryptocurrencies. We need to type text. This is a string. So we'll say they can either enter all to get the data from these top 100 cryptocurrencies that automatically get grabbed with the API, or they can enter a specific cryptocurrency and they'll get data about that specific one. So we'll say enter all or name of crypto. I.e. Bitcoin to see the Then we'll let them enter their choice. We'll say choice equals input.
Alright, so now once we have a choice, we have to figure out if they typed all or if they typed a specific cryptocurrency. So we'll say if choice equals all, then we gotta get the request again. We can just copy this from up here. So this time we're getting the ticker URL. And now we have to loop through all of these objects inside of this array. So this is one object in the array. And I'll show you guys an easy way to do that. So we'll say, so we got our data. This is all of the JSON data. Now we need to separate it into objects. So we'll say for X in data. Um, let's just grab the symbol of the currency, like BTC. Let's say symbol equals X symbol. We'll call this the ticker. And then price equals X. And as you can see over here, it's price USD. And now let's just print out, print these out. We'll say print symbol and plus We'll add some tabs. Let's add a dollar sign plus price. All right, we're gonna say else in case they don't say their choice isn't all, they've selected a specific cryptocurrency they want to choose. So then we have to append that specific cryptocurrency to this base URL. So it'll be slash v1 slash ticker slash Bitcoin or slash Ethereum. So we'll say ticker URL um, plus equals We gotta get the request again. Let's copy from up here. And then we need to get this data again. But the difference is that we're not looping through it. We have to actually specify the index of the array that we want this data at. So we'll say ticker equals data zero. Symbol. So we're specifying that we're at the zeroth index of the array of objects. Even though it only returns one object, it's still in an array form because you can see this angle bracket up here. And then the other one we want is price, price equals X, or no data, zero, price, USD. And this is supposed to be ticker. Okay, let's just copy this. Um, and that's basically it. Now, if we want them to have the option to run it again, let's just add a uh, loop to it. Let's we'll say while true, it's basically an infinite loop. And then we'll give them another choice down here. We'll say choice, uh, just choice two equals input again, yes or no. And then we'll say if choice two equals yes, then we'll continue, meaning we'll keep looping. And if choice two equals no, 
then we'll break. All right, so that's, I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and run it. So we'll say, oh, let me make sure I saved it. Yeah, make sure you save it first. Um, so Python 3 coin market cap. Um, oh, I, f I must have forgot something there. I'm line 30. Hmm. Current ticker. Let's see. Invalid syntax. Um. Oh, forgot to add the uh, concatenation symbol here. Let's try it again. Oh, I did it again. Oh yeah, because I copy and pasted that. Hmm. Oh. I see. So it's not request.json, it's request.json. Because that's my variable up here. There we go. All right, let's see if it works. Let's type all. We should get a list of the top 100 cryptocurrencies. Yep, there we go. And now let's run it again. Let's say yes. And let's choose Bitcoin. Oh, there it goes. $15,057. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I also made another program with this CoinMarketCap API, and it's open source. I put it on GitHub. I'll also put this code on GitHub if you guys want to check it out. Um, I've made a link to the video of that other Python program I made, and it basically shows the future value of all cryptocurrencies. If they were at the market cap of gold, at the market cap of the world stock markets, and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and have a great day.